Good morning, world history students. Today is January 13th, 2022. As I told you, Zoom is broken on my computer. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. Instead, I'm going to record these class videos. They're going to be about 10 to 15 minutes long, and I will send the link to you, which you can watch on YouTube. And you complete the assignments, the warm-ups, at your own discretion on your own timeline. Today, our warm-up is from pages 346 to 357, but we're going to do it together. I want you to identify the creator of each of the following famous Renaissance works of art. Number one is the statue David, and we're talking about, about the adult David holding the sling, not young David, by Donatello. The Last Supper, a painting, a masterpiece of perspective, the Vitruvian Man, a sketch, Gautamalata, an equestrian statue, and part of a much larger work of art called the Ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. The most famous panel from that chapel is the Creation of Adam. Now we're going to go to our Renaissance art PowerPoint, which is available to you on Canvas, and we're going to identify those works of art. Let's start with the Vitruvian Man. The Vitruvian Man is a sketch. It's not a full-blown painting. It's a simple sketch. It was sketched by Leonardo da Vinci, and he used this to model how humans actually look, how the joints, the muscles, the bones, the tendons, the ligaments work together. By doing this, he's able to create more realistic figures in his artwork. And you can see the realism of Leonardo's art in The Last Supper and the Mona Lisa. The Vitruvian Man by Leonardo da Vinci. Using a human model, he made a sketch, an anatomic, anatomically correct sketch of how humans actually look. It's realism. Next is the statue David. The statue David was sculpted by the brilliant Renaissance artist Michelangelo. The statue David is in Florence, the city that was controlled by the Medici. Now, adult David here is supposed to represent the ideal proportions of a perfect human man. So at least according to Michelangelo and Renaissance Italians, this is the ideal human man form. The ideal proportions of height to weight and the size of the arms and the legs in proportion to the height in the body. Look at the details in the hands, the face, the hair, the chest, the sides, the ribs. It's incredible. The statue David is 16 meters tall. That's about 45 feet tall, carved out of a solid block of marble. The Statue David by Michelangelo. Our next painting is a huge work of art on the ceiling of the Pope's private church in Vatican City in Rome in Italy. The Pope at the time commissioned Michelangelo to paint the ceiling, and Michelangelo painted scenes from the Bible. In many ways, it's kind of like a comic book or a graphic novel. The actions in the paintings tell the story. There are no words. There are no captions. The most famous scene from the Sistine Chapel is just right of center, a painting called The Creation of Adam. The Creation of Adam. Now, The Creation of Adam is one of the most famous paintings or works of art in all of human history. It represents God on the right and the first man, Adam, on the left. God is represented as bearded and regal and divine. He has a tunic on. He's supported in a cloud of angels. And underneath his arm is Eve. Eve, Adam's future wife before she is created. God is being held up by angels. And God is stretching out. He's reaching out to connect with man. Man, however, sitting on the left, is lazy. He's sitting on his butt 
All he has to do to connect to God is to reach his finger out and touch God, to connect with the divine. But instead, his finger hangs lazy. God and man's fingers do not touch. There is a slight gap in between their fingers. And this has led to countless interpretations and thoughts and ideas. What was Michelangelo trying to say by the divine and man not actually touching? One more thing I'd like to point out about this painting is that the creation of Adam is not just realism. It's actually what we call It's actually what we call idealized realism. So these are not just realistic looking human characters. These are bodybuilder human characters. These are idealized, once again, kind of like comic books. They have huge muscles. They've been working out a lot. So both Adam and God have large biceps and big legs. They've obviously been working out a lot. They're professional athletes. Let's continue on. Our next work of art that we need to look at is, actually, let's go back to our warm-up. So on our warm-up, back to our warm-up, let's go ahead and answer a few of these. The statue David, adult David, was sculpted by the brilliant artist Michelangelo. The Vitruvian Man. The Vitruvian Man was a sketch all about realism, how to make accurate human figures in art, and it was by Leonardo da Vinci. Gata Mulata and Creation of Adam. Let's go Creation of Adam, number five. Creation of Adam was also painted by Michelangelo, who was both a brilliant sculptor and a brilliant painter. Our next painting is The Last Supper. Now, to start with, this is a biblical, it's religious subject matter. The composition is Jesus Christ in the center. And if you notice, his body, his head, his arms, and the table make a perfect equilateral triangle. Also notice that there are balanced compositions, six disciples in lifelike human poses on either side of Jesus. The Last Supper is a masterpiece of perspective. You'll notice that Jesus' head is at the center of the painting. Leonardo used lines of perspective to link everything in the painting to the center. So the lines where the wall meets the ceiling and the lines on the ceiling and the lines where the windows meet the wall, all lead back to Jesus. This gives the illusion of three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface. Also, take a look at the shadows, the realistic shadows under the table where there would be shadows, and the light source coming in from the windows in the background. So Leonardo uses realism, human models, perspective, and light and shading to make The Last Supper a true Renaissance masterpiece. The last work of art that we're going to look at today in our warm-up is Gata Mulata by Donatello. Donatello was a famous Renaissance artist. He also sculpted a young David out of bronze, but he was most well known for his equestrian statues, statues of riders on horses, like this one of the Italian warlord, Gata Mulata. So now we can complete our warm up. The Last Supper, as we know, is a masterpiece of perspective, of realism, and of shading, light and shadows, painted by Leonardo da Vinci. Gata Mulata was sculpted by the artist Donatello, and it is an equestrian statue. 
You're welcome now to take a screenshot of the warm-up. We'll turn them in tomorrow or on Tuesday when we return to school. And now we're going to go to Canvas. All right, and now we're on our Canvas page. I'm in student view, so your Canvas page should look much like this one. And I want you to look on the right side of the screen, and it has our upcoming assignments. So this week we had Chapter 16, Lesson 1, Guided Reading. That was due on the 12th. You can still turn that in for full credit. Renaissance Art Notes. When we click on Renaissance Art Notes, it'll take us to the assignment. The assignment will have a page of notes, much like we normally take in class. However, this time, you're going to use the text box to complete the notes online and use the Submit Assignment button to turn it in. So, for instance, you know that number one is the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. We know that number six is by Raphael and... This work of art was called the School of Athens. So by using that text box, you can complete the assignment, and when you're done, click the Submit a, uh, button. To get to the Renaissance Art PowerPoint, you'll just need to click on this link above the assignment, and that will have everything that you need to complete that assignment, and everything that you need to complete the quiz also. So the last thing I want you to do this week, in addition to your reading guides, is a Renaissance art quiz. So when I click on quiz, we only have one quiz so far this semester. It's Renaissance art. It's 10 questions, and it's worth 50 points. You have unlimited attempts to take the quiz, meaning I want you to take this quiz until you get all 10 questions right and you have a 100%. All of the questions are identifying the names of the works of art that we've talked about the last couple weeks that were created during the Renaissance. So for instance, this sculpture we know is the David by Michelangelo. Take the test, the quiz, as many times as you need to to make a 100%. You also have the two reading guides due this week. And I just wanted to make a note that if you are new to class, if this is your first uh, week in Coach Wright's World History class, I will give you some leeway and some grace in getting these assignments turned in next week. But for everyone else, I want you to be caught up and make sure that you are doing what you need to do to make a good grade in world history. I'm going to leave you all with that today. Also, if you need to talk to me, if you need to... Um, my help to help you with an assignment, you're welcome to call me on my school phone number. My school phone number is 918-357-71655. And that will call my desk and I can help you with any assignment that you need help with. Please let me know if you have any questions or need any help. You can contact me through email, text, or phone call. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. I'll be posting another video for you tomorrow. Goodbye.